Hello, I'm Terry Moffitt, and I would like to thank you, dear viewer, for looking in on this video. I'm here today to say a big thank you to the International Juvenile Justice Observatory. A few days ago, I was told that the IJJO has selected me for this year's International Award for Juvenile Justice Without Borders. This is a very special award that honors the protection of the rights of children worldwide, especially children who are in conflict with the law. This kind of amazing award doesn't happen to me every day, and the first thing I asked them was, why me? IJJO gave me three reasons. First, I'm a clinical psychologist, and my work is international. I work in Britain, the United States, and New Zealand. Through collaborations, I'll soon be helping new projects in Brazil and Norway. The second reason given by IJJO was because of the kind of research I do. I've studied children in conflict with the law by tracking them for many decades. We find out where juvenile offenders come from and where they end up. I work on the Dunedin study, which follows 1,000 babies born in New Zealand in 1972. They are by now in their 40s. I also founded a study called the Environmental Risk Study, which follows 2,000 babies born in Britain in 1994, who are by now in their mid-twenties. These kinds of projects are called longitudinal studies. These research projects have allowed my research team to make some special discoveries over the decades. Perhaps the most well-known finding is that not all children who enter the juvenile justice system are the same. Some children in our longitudinal studies who are in conflict with the law as teenagers continued forward as adults in a criminal lifestyle for many, many years. They commit crimes that are violent and they harm many victims over the years of their lives. By studying young people from birth, we have learned how to identify this group of life course persistent offenders in advance and we've learned what goes wrong in the early years of their childhoods that can be prevented. For example, this kind of persistent and violent offending runs strongly in families across many generations and children are maltreated and neglected in such violent families. But it's important to know that this group of youth offenders is only very small in number. What's most interesting is that our longitudinal studies have shown that there's a much, much larger group of children who also get in conflict with the law as teenagers. This large group is able to outgrow their teenage delinquent lifestyle, and they have a good chance to become law-abiding, good citizens as adults. An understanding that most juvenile offenders have a good future ahead of them has led juvenile justice systems in many countries to become more open to non-punishment options. Options such as rehabilitation, diversion, and family support are sensible for this very large group of short-term offenders. I think longitudinal studies that track young offenders for many decades as they grow up give hope to professionals who work in the juvenile justice system. Because studies like mine remind us that most young offenders will become productive citizens. That's an uplifting message for weary professionals who have the extremely difficult job of trying to control youth crime. I'm very pleased that the International Juvenile Justice Observatory has recognized our research with this year's International Award for Juvenile Justice Without Borders. Thank you very much.